My God, it's kind of cold there in Survival of the Fittest. You may want to put on a jacket. It's going to get pretty freezing. Woo! Holy fuck me sideways, bud. She's colder than the witch's tit up in this bitch. You better lay her up, buttercup. You're going to freeze your fucking beanbag off. I'll tell you that right now. Hey guys, it's Dan, your host of D and Reviews, and today I'm back for another video for Survival of the Fittest. This one is going to be doing my weekly review for this week's episode. This is for Season 6, Episode 6, titled Blood Feud. Alright guys, this one's going to be doing a review today. This one's going to be doing a review for Survival of the Fittest. This one's going to be doing my weekly review for this week's episode of Survival of the Fittest Season 6. This one is for Episode 6, titled Blood Feud. So, this is the 6th episode now for Survival of the Fittest. We are almost halfway through Season 6 already. Uh, that's when you know time flies. We are almost already making it all the way through Season 6 of Survival of the Fittest. Uh, this is Episode 6 now. So, uh, this is probably our most like climactic episode of the season so far, at least in terms of like things building up up and you know things kind of just uh, imploding basically uh, with the dragons versus David's group and I thought this was a, a pretty darn good episode um, I did have my fair share of flaws with this one though uh, which we'll get into of course in the review but I thought this was a you know a pretty good episode of survival of the fittest with some pretty darn uh, good action uh, throughout so this one basically we have the meeting between uh, Malici and the rest of the dragons uh, they are meeting at one spot with Henry and the others uh, and then you got David Miranda and the rest that meet them there so it's kind of like an arrow at the door doorpost walking dead type of episode for this one right they kind of meet uh they try to come to terms you've got warwick that's captured so miranda is obviously begging that they give him back over and to make sure that he's okay and stuff and we kind of get that meeting um pretty relatively early on in the episode and things go relatively well right so, i mean not fully well but they're gonna give warwick back but ex in exchange they have to obey by what the dragons tell them to do they're gonna take wellington for themselves and they're basically gonna live like slaves but in return they get warwick back right so miranda is kind of willing to just kind of give over and get warwick back and just kind of live under the dragon's rules until they can kind of figure everything out but warwick in this episode kind of has a little bit of a change of mind uh, after the deal is actually made and you know everything kind of goes smoothly and um he decides that he's going to pull out a gun and he actually kills Malici. so that was um that was pretty unexpected i didn't expect him to do that but i understand why he did do it because uh you don't want to obey by the dragon's rules you don't want to you know live like slaves and stuff and i think warwick in that scene is basically saying like you know fuck this like we're not going to do that you know so that sets everything off clay and and the others, Derek and everybody else now have to go in and it turns into an all out shootout, which I thought was really, really well handled. And that's probably my favorite aspect of this episode is the action kind of throughout and the shootouts throughout. Uh, we saw a lot of really good battles in this episode. For example, my favorite one is Asuka versus Warwick, uh, which I thought was really, really awesome. They kind of, you know, fight to the death back and forth and stuff like that, uh, which I thought was pretty darn cool. And the battles throughout, like I said, was really good. You've got like David that's like cornered on top of this roof or whatever. He's trying to kind of get down. You've got Derek and Dog and the rest of them, uh, Cade, that are all kind of firing back and forth, uh, which I thought was pretty good. And, um, I really like the snow and like the blizzard aspect of it as well too. I thought that was really good. Now, um, we do get to see during the fight with Asuka and Warwick as they're kind of battling it out back and forth. Uh, Asuka is actually narrowly winning this fight and Miranda does end up come in, uh, coming in and saving Warwick as a result. But Asuka ends up shooting Miranda, and Miranda goes down. So that is one of our major, like, potential casualties uh, for this episode on our good side. But we don't know. The episode did not exactly answer whether or not Miranda is going to live or survive. Um... We don't know. She could either die or she'll live. Uh, so that's something that we still have to kind of see. But she's shot right now. She's injured. And she's injured trying to save her son uh, that was about to get killed by Asuka. So it makes sense, right? I mean, they just got him back. And she is uh, willing to sacrifice herself uh, to save Warwick, which is pretty crazy. Now, we then have the battle between Henry and Clay. Now, this battle was not exactly as eventful as the 601 battle that they had. This one is you know, exactly anything like that. Uh, they had a minor kind of fight in this one. And then basically, well, this is when the episode kind of goes downhill for me, guys. Uh, this is because honestly, I was really enjoying the episode up until about this point. Uh, 
Clay ends up shooting Henry, and Henry ends up going down, and they kind of do this, like, fake out, like, oh, is Henry going to make it? Oh, he's been shot. Like, look, which might I add to where he got shot was, like, damn near the heart. Uh, the way that was filmed was not exactly my thing either. But anyway, uh, it makes it seem like Henry is going to die in that scene, which I thought was really, really weird. And David and the others, like, they completely just forget about Clay. They're just like, yeah, let's get back to Wellington. Let's get back to Wellington, you know, immediately, that whole kind of thing. And, um... No one is looking for Clay. No one is looking for Clay. No one's mentioning him what you know whatsoever. They all just pack their shit and get out and completely forget about Clay. Until when they're on their way back to Wellington, Clay ends up contacting David and he ends up saying, like, yeah, I'm you know, I'm gonna be gone for a little while. I got something I gotta do on my own, you know? And David's like, Oh yeah, yeah, no problem, you know, whatever. Like no mentions of Clay, no nothing, they don't go back for him, nothing like that, he's got Henry captive now, and it's like, why don't you just bring Henry back to the freaking community if you're gonna keep him hostage, like, and this is the part that really confused me as well too, he ends up going back to Polito Bay with an injured Henry, when you could easily just go back to Wellington with an injured Henry, and, you know, interrogate him there, or do whatever you want to do with him there, like, it's so weird, and in particular, David and the others willing to just bail on Clay like that, and not mentioning him, not wondering where he is, that was a really weird decision, and I'm also not a big fan of the whole Henry shot, he's gonna die, oh, maybe he won't type of thing. I just found it to be really weird, and same thing with, like, Miranda getting shot like that, guys, like, it just, like... It's repeating the same thing that we saw with Blair a few episodes ago. Unless she ends up dying, which I would actually like that twist at this point. Uh, the final, like, ten minutes of the episode, guys, like, really went downhill. Like, I did not enjoy it at all. So, um, yeah, this episode, I'm going to give it an 8 out of 10. Because for the most part, I enjoyed it. But the final, like, 5-10 minutes, I was starting to kind of get a little aggravated, to be honest, with some of the decision-making. And David and them leaving Clay the way they did. And Clay going off on his own mission. And the Miranda fake out and Henry and it's like it was just it was getting a little bit ridiculous for me guys and it was getting a little bit like okay like obviously this person's not gonna die oh now this person's gonna die this person's shot like it was kind of getting a little bit too much for me guys but like I said, I enjoyed the battle, I enjoyed what was done, but I think it was a little bit overkill on the fake outs, and oh, this person's not going to make it, and oh, this part, like, that part was really starting to get on my nerves. So, anyway, let me know in the comment section below what you guys think of this episode of Survival of the Fittest. Uh, probably my least favorite from this season, but I did enjoy it. I did enjoy a lot of the episode. I'm still going to give it an 8 out of 10, don't get me wrong. I still enjoyed a lot of the episode, and I think most of the episode was very well done. Uh, in particular, the first, like, 25 minutes or so was, was very, very well well done. I really enjoyed that stuff. So anyway, if you're new to the channel and you enjoyed this video, make sure to click the subscribe button to miss any other videos for Survival of the Fittest. Make sure to follow me on Dan's The Walking Dead reviews on Instagram, guys. And of course, I'll see you guys really soon for more videos for Survival of the Fittest. Enjoy the rest of your day, guys, and peace out.